end up doing a VOD review. It's uh, from this past Saturday's R2v2. It's probably the most competitive game out of the entire series. It's Concob and Tonic and then Essence and P-Ninja. Yeah, they just played the last game at group stage and they're going right back into playing in the bracket now. We'll jump on over. We'll talk about this a little bit. We'll talk about this a little bit. When you're going up in a double block situation 2v2, you want to make sure that it does not come across. We're seeing a flip from Concob, and then Tonic is trying to set slap, right? So both of these things, if they go wrong, are going to send the ball straight down on your side, and you don't have a defender in this area to pick those up, right? If you're in a bad position, let's say the ball's coming into the joust situation, right? Your blocker goes up with it, and you're standing right here because you're not going to be able to get back to something in this area or in this area if they slap it down, like basically in this whole arc here. So it is okay to go up for a double block and actually might be preferable in this situation to go up for a double block simply because you're not going to be able to cover anyways. You might as well put up the biggest block that you can. It limits the angle to more of this as opposed to this. However, like I said, Concob's flipping, Tonic is set blocking, and there's a high likelihood that either Concob's going to send it straight down or possibility that they're going to send it off of the set slap and it's going to go down like that. If you're going up into double block in 2v2, try to stay straight up or if anything, side flip. And this is something that in my last VOD review I talked about a lot. Essence hits it basically off of his thumb and his pointer, right? So the ball is now going to go this way towards the net. When you're doing these sets, you don't really want the ball past this line right here. Like if it's past that first line, consider it a joust situation. Don't push the ball towards the net and make it a joust situation. And if you do, the setter, if both players on the ground, goes for the block, this person drops back. If Penis is already in the air, they go for the joust in the contest and the setter steps back and gets ready for the cover essence went for the uh the cover p ninja went up uh, i think essence might get this let's see nope essence does not get that so yeah following the proper rules if p ninja goes up essence stays down and covers essence stay down and covered because p ninja went up now let's talk about blinders and this is the thing a lot of times players aren't looking at what's going on over here they're just looking at where the ball's going tonic we can clearly see is going up right here with the shadow for that joust going to hit the ball p ninja's shadow starts going this way and then when he finally notices he's coming he's trying to come back this way but he has enough forward momentum that he just continues on in this direction you have to be looking at the other side of the court understand where the ball is and you should be able to get to it without focusing directly on the ball this should not be your focus if your eyes are directly on this at all times then it's a bad thing you, situations like this are going to happen where you're going to be trying to do what you want to do but your opponent is going to end up doing what they want to do and in this case the opponent what the opponent wants to do is the right call and ends up getting the score here so if the ball is anywhere in this general vicinity this is the blockers area the blocker handles anything in this vicinity if it's in this area i'd say it's the hitters but in all actuality in 2v2 you don't necessarily want to be going past here right the reason we're saying this is because it's basically just blocking. That is the blocker's area. Let the blocker handle it. If you're the hitter, stay out of any contest that goes in this area. Here is more for you know how you and your teammate work together. Mainly you want to see anything in this area going for the hitter. Anything back here could be either or because blockers do like to use that teleporter. We had both our hitter going for it and our blocker going for it. So it ends up being a precarious situation. I believe they get out of it, but yeah. All right. So I talked about this in my last VOD review that I did like a year and a half ago, but it's a good, important tip. I don't always follow it either. Everybody wants to go up and get that big block on the fancy serves. So versus fancy serves, 
you kind of want to be standing here and here. Don't go up for the block. We'll see Concob serve always lands in this area. You'll notice they go up for the block easily right down in that corner. You have more control of your body on the ground. Stay on the ground. Fancy serves are super predictable. You should be able to pick up almost any fancy serve by just two players staying down. And you see how far Essence was off from the block, right? The ball crosses here. Essence is still over here when he blocks. Fancy serves aren't that scary once you learn you stay down, especially if you're on dive assist. Where, where are the positions that I mentioned earlier? They're standing here and here, right on top of each other. It's okay to spread out. When I played volleyball way back in high school and in college, we used a two defender server seat. This was always the front row, since the front row would always be on the left so that they had a clean sweep to go for their, their outside hit. That's why the front was always on that. Because of that, your primary defender was this person. So they covered anything on this side and anything on this side. That was all theirs. They covered two thirds of the court. This player here, the front row outside hitter, only covered this side. Likewise, in Slappy Ball, in 2v2, your primary defender should be the person covering whichever side they're on, covering two thirds of the court. Blocker, who's usually your setter in 2v2, is the one that only covers to their left. If you want to stack it closer so that they're there, they're closer to three than the defender is, so there's a little less room that the defender has to worry about, do so. But you can't both be standing on three and you have to split the court. Okay, look at Essen's body, right? See which direction he's he's facing. Grant, he wants to get this before it hits the wall so the three grows less. But look at look at the positioning of his body. He's facing outside of the court. When you're on the edge of the court here, and this is especially true for like edge guarding, if the ball is gonna be off the side right here, have your hand facing this way, standing on the edge of the court. Purposefully, so you can do a set release and send the ball this way. This is especially true for doing edge guarding where you're still on the floor. If they're late on their offside, you're gonna flip it and it's gonna come away from the end. It's, Seems like a small thing. A lot of things in Slappy Alt Ball are small things, but in actuality, that is a big thing. All right, so Essence sets it up. P-Ninja's off. Essence should automatically, Essence's already in the set form. P-Ninja needs to be setting up for his hit right now. You can see P-Ninja jumps back onto the court, and now he's in a set. Essence has already been in that set. P-Ninja needs to be setting up for his hit. Say he wants to start his approach from over here, he needs to walk over here. Or he can go around the backside from there. That's the first part of this. Now let's talk about the second part. Essence goes up, decides he doesn't want to hit it. Here's another bonk situation. Essence doesn't need to be going for this. First off, he doesn't need to be hitting his own set. Usually you want a stronger hit from your teammate. But right here, Essence set, he needs to let P-Ninja attack. Essence went for the hit since it was an off-body hit. He can come down on it, unless he's not going to come down on it, and then P-Ninja has to die for it. Since Essence can come down, he came down early, P-Ninja once again needs to set up for his approach and his attack. Right here, very dangerous, probably going to bonk. P-Ninja comes underneath, and I think P-Ninja actually gets that set. Essence goes up on it. They do end up getting the score, but just pay attention to your teammate. If your teammate's already set up, ready to set it, don't even walk towards him. Step away. Move away from the ball. I beg of you, move away from the ball. You're right here. I'm right here. The ball is going to land right here. It's behind this, this second line, so this person needs to step up and take it. Knowing that, this player needs to vacate the area. Give no sign that you are going to the ball to set it. There's no confusion, and they can step in and get a good set to you. If they're already in position, don't move in on them. Now in Q, it's a bit different because I don't trust people in Q. I don't trust new players to actually get under the ball. If I realize they're not gonna get it, I'll dive under it. P Ninja doesn't need to jump here. Essence is going for the hit. Stay down, stay in the arc of where the ball is and be ready to pick up any trash at the net, right? As you would say in hockey, when it bounces off the goalie, getting the goal off the, picking up the trash at the net. 
As we see, he's not there. But look, look where that ball landed. Ball landed right here. If P Ninja is in this arc and on the ground, that's an easy step back or dive back. It was a slow ball, didn't travel very fast. But if he just stays down in that situation because he set the ball to his teammate, teammate is up on it, and it's not a quick. Stays down and covers this, he probably saves the three. You know, it's still two to three at that point. That being said, if it is, if you are running a quick and you're going to run an X, the setter has to be the second hitter. Here's the setter. Your hitter comes in for the quick, purposefully misses it. Then you go up on your own set and you attack. Meanwhile, the person who went on the quick is the one coming back around to be the person in cover. So this is a little more high level play, a little more team play. But if you're running a quick, this is the one time the setter should go up on the ball is in this situation of uh, the X play. All right, so here's what I was talking with Konkov during his stream. So in 2v2, there should be a rotation. Right here, P Ninja is the blocker setter. He feels he has to go for this set. In 2v2, rolls are not as hard set. You should be rotating, which means that you should think more or less of yourself as the primary blocker or primary setter or primary defender or primary hitter. It's not like 3v3 where you can have one set setter, one set defender, or two set defenders, or one set blocker, or two set blockers. In 2v2, you have to play all aspects of the game. So there's sometimes as a defender, you're going to need to be blocking. You're going to need to rotate and block. Too many teams are so set in the ways of... I'm the only one that blocks and they're the only one that defends or I'm the only one that defends and they're the only one that blocks. With a proper rotation, you're both gonna be blocking, you're both gonna be defending. There is a primary, so when you feel safe, you rotate back to your primary roles. So the blocker comes off, comes here for an offsides. Defender steps up to block. The blocker then comes back and fills in. And that is a proper rotation. Do the proper rotation. When you feel safe, swap back. Because there's a lot of times that you're going to miss this offside or your opponent is actually going to get the hit or you're going to be so far deep and they're going to undercut you and go for the hit. You need a blocker. Right. Setting the block is the most fundamental part of 2v2. And you got to do it. This is why I say this is the blocker's region because you can easily rotate back around the post and do your normal blocking job. If you're still a blocker in this area, as soon as you come past that first line into this area, you are no longer a blocker, you are a hitter. And your defender needs to step up and become the blocker, and then you fill it in the back. They met here, they both got blocked. This is a sticky situation. This is part of that rotation I was just talking about. P Ninja ends up at the front. This is a blocker's area. P Ninja at this point, by positioning, is the blocker. Essen needs to be the defender. This is your defender, this is your blocker. P Ninja needs to go up on the edge guard on this because it's in the blocker's area. Essence needs to stay down and be the defender. Simple enough, right? But yeah, it's a big thing. Both of these teams, always too close together, too close to their teammate, stepping in on their teammate when they're trying to set, things like that. Flow with your teammate. That's the biggest thing. Hope that helped all you guys. I'm gonna be doing probably at least one of these a week. I might not always do the R2v2 if people do a scrim and want to see their scrim VOD review. I'll definitely sit down and do that. But anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of our VOD review. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you enjoyed it.